Welcome back to the Environmental Law Monitor, a podcast brought to you by Bracewell LLP. My name is Daniel Pope, and this is a quick hit on some developments regarding the waters of the United States. Well, not all of them, just the regulatory definition that governs the extent of the Clean Water Act. It's just me recording in the office solo today, and we're going to keep this pretty short. If you haven't listened to my conversation with Ann Navarro and Brittany Pemberton, you might want to pause this and listen to that episode first, because what I'm doing with this quick hit is providing an update on something we talked about in that episode. And if you are familiar with the Waters of the United States rulemaking and have been joining me in the misery that is paying attention to and sorting out all of that over the past few years, you probably know where this little episode is going. In my episode with Ann and Brittany, we were talking about permitting large and complex projects and how important it is to be able to understand what federal requirements apply to your project, how those requirements might change while your project is going through the design authorization and construction phases. And I mentioned WOTUS and we pointed out how a federal court in the District of Arizona had actually vacated the Navigable Waters Protection Rule. That's the Trump administration rule that was controversial. Uh, It was finalized in 2020 and drew a lot of challenges. And most of those challenges had more or less petered out. But as Ann and Brittany and I were working on that episode. We noted how uh, the District of Arizona had actually vacated the rule. EPA and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had asked for the court to remand the rule without vacating it. So basically sending it back to the agencies without undoing the rule or invalidating it. Well, that court decided that it did want to invalidate or vacate that rule And the next question that we all had, and we even uh, hinted at this on the podcast, was that we were going to be interested to see what EPA and the Corps thought of that decision coming out of Arizona. Would they say, okay, well, the navigable waters protection rule is invalid only in the state of Arizona, or is it going to have broader effect? And we've actually seen that. So over the Labor Day long weekend on September 3rd, EPA changed its website for the current implementation of the WOTUS rule. So it it changed its website to say that basically it was going to be treating the District of Arizona's decision as binding the EPA and the Corps nationwide. So in other words, EPA and the Corps are now going back to the pre-2015 Waters of the United States rules. And those are the classic rules that were first promulgated in 1986 and are modified by a couple of Supreme Court decisions and associated guidance. Those rules are going to be in effect until the EPA sets out to revise the Waters of the United States rule all over again. So the bottom line of this quick update is that we are now back to a pre-2015 Waters of the United States rulemaking. That means that we are going to be looking much more closely at the specific characteristics of streams and wetlands and what kind of connections they have to truly navigable waterways. Uh, That also means very significantly that projects that are in the pipeline, whether they're sort of in the design or permitting phase or have begun construction, may now be triggering federal permitting requirements. Okay, so that's that's something that's absolutely important. And if you're listening to this, you're definitely going to be reviewing those projects. Uh, And then finally, and most importantly, we do need to be paying attention to new Waters of the United States rulemaking. This rule and the definition of Waters of the United States, I'm sure, will continue to be the bane of my existence, sort of like you know, a good college football team that continually frustrates you, but that's not going to stop me from following it closely. So please do subscribe to our podcast. Please do reach out to me if you've got any questions about the content of this podcast or my conversation with Ann or Brittany. You can email me at daniel.pope at bracewell.com. Please let us know if you have any questions on this or various other sundry topics and be sure to subscribe. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. 